continuing to build it. All right, everybody, welcome to Got Therapy. Dan, Dr. Dan Rose is here. And uh, Dan, how are you today? Yeah, I am. Uh, had a long day yesterday, so I'm a little tired. Okay. A little tired. All right, well, that's okay. Well, it is the weekend, and so one of the things that happens is the uh, weekend is sort of a refresher. You know, I'm hoping so. That you can uh, kind of catch I'm, up I'm, uh, on things. I'm going to sit around and um, read some post-Hegelian philosophy. Okay. Well, not 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 many others uh, and, and are doing that. Maybe there's a club out there of you guys. There, there uh, aren't many. That, no, uh, <laughs> there's um. <laughs> there's uh, only you. And, Somebody that wrote it, and then you, the one and, reader. I think, and some maybe. guy in prison who's being punished because that's the only book he's got. <laughs> they like, you know. Well, I'd love and, to. I'd love to talk more about that because I'm. I'm really wondering what that is and um, mm-hmm. why you're interested. Well, I'll say there. the only reason I read this stuff is chicks dig it. It's yeah. really the only. <laughs> That's it's real. Yeah, you can pull some uh, pickup lines out of it uh, to yeah. uh, to use, but no, that's probably not it at all. Yeah, it's probably some study that you've uh, you you've done, and and it's about uh, Freudian uh, psychology of some sort, I would imagine. Well, yeah. Because well, here's the thing: the reason why you read philosophy is you want to be able to catch another mind in motion. You can literally see another subject grappling with something so it's you don't go to philosophy for answers necessarily but you go to philosophy to help you get better questions okay and i often find that interesting i find that interesting too the idea of a good question and sometimes Mm -hmm. there's so many different ways to go about that Mm -hmm. but um so you evidently there's something dinging around here uh is that an emergency that we need to go no no it's it's not it's not not. you're 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 a mental health uh consultant well there uh, there are there are some things going on but that wasn't uh, all right (laughs) okay well just i I point that out probably no one hears it on the mic but i did pick it up in the headphones so Mm -hmm. i will say uh, oh is that these headphones are good uh, yeah they get uh they get right at the action you get to really hear yourself it's a little different um way to have a conversation but actually i think it helps you focus on the conversation a little bit you can kind of uh, just make the audio um, a little more prevalent in our conversation because but also you can I move, have a, move back and forth. I have the, intense the ear shame. When I put these things on, I just you know I feel more comfortable. I've got ear shame. I've never heard, never heard of that um, ear shame. You say? I don't okay. know if you've ever seen the chimp, the uh, ears of a chimp. I was born with them. They're sort of like small, fat ears. Right. Right. Okay. That's, you know, I've got uh, I got chimp ear. A lot of people who were born with chimp ear usually get that surgic. That there's like an operation you get early on, and I. I don't know my if parents this is couldn't. a real thing or not, but, my, but my, yeah, the chimps do have ears. Whether we have a, some syndrome. My parents uh, were too know. poor to afford surgery for my chimp ear, and so you know. It's, <laughs> and so the headphones <laughs> exacerbates the uh, the issue. All right, well, that well, sounds I, I, good. I think it's a, it, it's a cure because you know na- nowadays a lot of the cool kids are wearing the the big the bigger Dr. Dre's the the Beats. You got you've ever had one. Yeah. Them beats. Yeah, yeah. You put the beats on and hide your chimp ear. Okay. In fact, I just assume whenever I see people walking around with those things on, they have chimp ear, and they're ashamed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know it was a big thing. Uh, but I, apparently, I, I it is something new every Because there's a lot of folks out there ha- hiding their ears, and I think it's because of chimp ear. All right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna after the show is over, I'm gonna go research that a little bit, and we'll probably do an entire podcast. Uh, bench- no, we won't. No, no, we we will not do that. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> I guess uh, it's Saturday again. We're doing these on Saturday morning. Morning. Well, Welcome, we we have, we have two uh, possibilities. Yeah, studio, yeah. And I know one of them. I think you would you would you, you would much rather revisit that the film that we saw together. You probably would prefer <laughs> yes. to have, I don't know, a, uh, a vasectomy. I, I, or, uh, <laughs> I'm going to do the EMT with some oxygen over here uh, yes. in case we so, go too far. But. We, we do have a second topic, which is topical. Okay. All right. So what do you think? Well, so, so we, maybe we can do the, 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 the movie review next time. That'll, okay. give us, that'll give you time to distance yourself from the trauma because often yes, it, it, the it, longer I'm, you have, I'm, I'm, you have You space. know, just, just being here is a trauma <laughs> enough uh, every week. But uh, then on the other hand, taking me to these obscure <laughs> art house movies, uh, I'm trying to figure out what just happened. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I'll get, I'll get some distance from the trauma. I'll be able to talk about it. Um, yeah, let's 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 do that. We might tie in the other. There's another. There's 
<laughs> Actually, okay, if I'm being truthful here, there's a there's a list of movies that you've brought up, and uh, somehow I've been engaged with those movies, and I'm not sure why and <laughs> and how it's affected me um, more traumatically, probably. But uh, on the other hand, yeah, let's get back to that. But you had an interesting topic, and you said, yeah, and this kind of clicks with me because I think uh, we can uh, – kind of see both sides of this. So what do you think? Well, I, th th there's currently a bit of a controversy, and it's the um, the OK Boomer controversy. OK Boomer. Right. I think you have to say it with some emphasis I mean, it's, because... Yeah, I probably should, yeah. OK yeah. Boomer. Right? Is that the... Yeah. OK. It's, yeah. It's, Get your act together. Be quiet. Mm. Uh, whatever that implies. It, and it, and it, 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 it uh, could be a blip, but I think in some ways it reflects yeah. current political and tensions... Right, particularly right. around um, climate change and um, uh, maybe change in general. And so it's sort of been sort of a battle cry for particularly millennials, I think, mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, not necessarily my generation because – I'm not sure what happened to us, but there's. Yeah, we're we, we, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about your generation I don't know because what's... Uh, if uh, you're the product of that, we're. I am. I am. You know, we're. Which, uh... by the way, there was a the there was a real resurgence of chimp here in the Generation X, <laughs> sort of skips generations, and I. I love how these. Uh, in music, it's called recapitulation of a theme, and it's somehow that <laughs> the thing we said at the beginning always kind of comes back throughout. But I'm I'm used to that, and you should be too, by the way. It's, well, it's in uh, jazz. You know, you you have to play the head, right? Yes. So that you, yeah. So you, so <laughs> See, you. Even that, right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. That 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 also could be. Yeah. Could be looking yeah, the wrong way. If you don't say. You, you, yeah. I don't give you openings all the time, but you give yourself openings for these things. <laughs> I, so do, I, I do. I do. I do. Understand how that works. Yeah. And all I right, don't so, want it anywhere near your openings. All right. Now, see, uh, uh, every single time. <laughs> see, all right. See, I can't. I, there's no. There's no stopping. It. There's no stopping it. But uh, the phenomenon. Okay, Boomers. boomer. I mean, okay, that's boomer. like. Uh, hey. Uh, we hear you be quiet now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's sort of an insult. It's mm -hmm. kind of getting at uh, – uh, and, and also, if you're saying it's political, that means when I think political these days, it's about which camp are you in. Um, the ones are zeros. I mean, it, you got to be one in the other. It's uh, it's bipolar. Well, I, I would wonder – I wonder – and I don't, don't have the stats in front of me, but I would imagine – that boomers may have a higher degree of folks who fall to the right than they would to the left. Probably maybe, so, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. We have to, I don't, we have I don't to know if that's that. the case. Yeah. Typically, um, but at a certain I, age, I guess that, yeah. there's, um, I don't know why, but I think at a certain age it, um, it skews a little more to the right. Maybe right. I'm wrong about that. Yeah. But there's also data that your political views really cement early, and they don't vary as much as people like to think they do. I think I, I read something about that from Drew Weston, I think. But, um, but like you fall into a camp and you stay there. You kind sort of stay. Of, uh, yeah, and it's usually a, the the family that you grew up in. So it says you, your political views often reflect, you know, your uh, your uh, developmental um, yeah, environment. I, yeah, I'm think, I, I so, think that, uh, I think that's true for me. Mm -hmm. um, Remembering back times with my grandmother, and we used to talk about politics, and sometimes we would cancel each other's vote out. We kind of <laughs> laughed about it like she was voting one way and yeah. vote the other. So, uh, but yeah, maybe and see, connected what I would do then to, to be able to to, to uh, advance my political agenda, the the day of. Um, voting, I would uh, I would somehow break her leg. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> you suffer all together. That's almost a horrible reference. I'm, I'm 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 coming back and thinking about that movie again. Maybe see, well, there's maybe a reason bring that up again. There's a reason why. I... All right, so this is a controversy about um, the, the the two different groups uh development groups really i mean that's it's kind of i don't know how this all started that we started grouping people in and we started calling people boomers and mm -hmm. and millennials and gen x and all those kinds of things cuz i'm not really sure the origin of that but now it's a thing right well and it probably like any category, any categories are they're they're probably spurious and they probably serve well they I mean, we we know they serve some sort of psychological reason the capacity to be able to label and compartmentalize allows you to be able to deal with someone without having to think them in some complexity right so, right yes that's right we just box people in and that's who we so it's that's uh, who they are for the and, rest and of the time interesting enough whenever you 
box someone in a box, you also box yourself because it's their complexity that also generates your own. So uh -huh. it's always a mutuality, a dialectic that uh, that is necessary. So when when the the mere act, uh, be it you know the categories of racism or the categories of uh, of uh, hard politics, it limits not just the other, but the subject as well. Right. And, uh, right. <clears throat> it's interesting too. That I think um, that that media plays a big part into this <laughs> because uh, you know the reporters and the people who put out all this media uh, throughout, and I'm not just not just social media, but just the general media, uh, looking for the next story to get people's mm -hmm. uh, attention and get the eyeballs on the page. It's all about the clicks. Things. It's all about the clicks. Somebody else said that around here. Not, not all too. about the clicks. <laughs> but but um, so there's some kind of combination. We didn't know it until it was publicized, and it's mm -hmm. everywhere now. It's a thing, and mm -hmm. I find that kind of interesting too. We maybe should be more critical about that and say, hey, this story sounds too sensational and we should forget it and move on. Mm -hmm. But these things develop and they become mm -hmm. things that are part of our culture now. Well, it, it, I think it, it's very difficult for any sort of news cycle not to be driven by um, it, it is news that has to sell. Right, and um, right. not that there aren't legitimate news outlets I can only think of one. Getting, NPR. getting harder to find. <laughs> it's, <laughs> one thing I one. Yeah, it, may, <laughs> it may be harder to find those these days. But you know, it's like uh, you, you just you, now that we have the term fake news, that can mm -hmm. be applied at any moment, any time to anything, even legitimate mm -hmm. facts-based um, reporting and that kind of thing. So we're in a strange time. But I here's think. what I used to say when we talk about this. What I think might be interesting is you are a boomer. And right now there is an attempt um, yes, through memes and through, uh, the, through, through political social discourse to be able to um, place at the feet of the boomer generation the current perception that we are heading toward catastrophe. Um, well, I feel like I've just been boxed in by this <laughs> comment toward me, um, and uh, we're about to head to a catastrophe if you say it again. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> See, so, so, but th that's also part of it, uh, that, that, that somehow the idea that, you know, folks of the boomer generation may be a tad yeah. sensitive about this, and they may not I like... I beg your pardon. <laughs> And they okay, might. There we go. <laughs> so, so the question might be: Is as a representative of of this? Uh, oh yes, that's who I. <laughs> that's who I am. <laughs> well, too bad. The uh, yeah. So here. now you have questions. I what think do you Hackett guys think? is more of a representation. Oh, listen, I will I throw that guy is, I will throw that professor emeritus under the bus in two seconds. He's the boomiest boomer uh, that ever boomed. But, <laughs> Great comment. <laughs> I hope I have that. On, I hope I've recorded that somewhere. Uh, that should be fun. Uh, yeah, the the boomers. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I, you know what, what's the definition and wh what are the characteristics of these guys? I'm just well. I'm apparently, it involves um, a level of narcissism <laughs> that will consume and destroy the planet. I think that's so uh, far. That's correct. What else you got? <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> that a, uh, <laughs> well, well in, in some respects, probably it's it's a matter of history. It's it's, it's just where you're placed in history, right? Yeah. Because the boomers would be, they are the children of the post-war folks, correct? Who, uh, and in America at least, there was a great economic boom, yes. and so yes, it was. Uh, the boomers were rode the wave of that econ economic boom. Yeah, came back after the war, had to build housing, families, everybody's back from the war, uh, industry starting up, uh, mm -hmm. things are spreading out, cities are formed and growing, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it was that time. And so you, you, your generation rides away, and, do it, and I guess if we continue these categories, I'm Generation X. And oh, so, there you go. So Hey, you, Generation X. I don't know what, but... What, what, uh, what do we can say? <laughs> hey, you guys do something. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> that's what <laughs> no, wait, 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 gonna, everybody's going to get their knocks in this, uh, <laughs> yeah, regardless what did. group, you know. But uh, we, we had, um, um, 
What, 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 what's her name? Uh, Winona Ryder. That's what we did. Winona Ryder. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Uh, who, who was responsible for leisure suits for men? That's what I want to know. I think that, that was, was you 70s. guys. Oh, oh, oh. Well, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, that was, sorry about that. <laughs> that was you guys. We uh, uh, And mullets. I think that also <laughs> came mullets. from you guys. But uh, I saw a guy with a mullet it's, yesterday. It's, it's, a, it's making a comeback. Is it making I think, a comeback? Yeah, the mullets are coming back. That's um, not a, I don't know what the heck it means, but they're coming I don't know. back. And I, I didn't do this in, when we talk a lot in here about the, the psychology and whatnot, and it's sure. important to be able to, to generate a certain level of subjective complexity where you allow yourself to yeah. feel what you feel, but you also insert a thought right. between the feeling and the action, so therefore you can allow some level of complexity so you f- you can think it without acting. Right. And I try to do that for myself. And and so when I saw the guy with the bullet, the first thought I had was to throw <laughs> gasoline on him oh, and set no. him on fire. But, you see, <laughs> I Wrong. didn't allow that. But, but somehow something stopped you, thank goodness. Right. Again, right. it's That's that subjective complexity. Say. It's allowing, yes. you know. It's, so, that, but so, so we have this 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 notion of uh, of of boomerhood, and and so well, well, my my generation, might um, we um, we were the after effects of this, and I do think there is this notion that somehow Generation X just sort of rode the wave of the wave. And um, but we still had economic prosperity. Right. Right. Um, however, we've off. We, we, we're uh, the millennials, and they think they call it Generation Z. Right. Um, for the first time, are facing a future where they're e- economically they're not going to do as well as a generation preceding. That absolutely. <clears throat> that is. That's uh, what the data begins to tell us now, and that's not a very. Um, you know, great vision of what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, there's some problems with that, but yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that each, if we're going to categorize things and every time you try to categorize something, there's always, mm-hmm. there, it's trying to make this demarcation, this line, and there's always mm-hmm. on both sides, there, there's really no complete category but that we, you can put people in. But right? we can see that, you know, after post-war there was, um, uh, the welfare state and the safety net. There were unions. There was um, um, uh, the the Great Depression sort of uh, uh, forced the hand of uh, the American government and the co- people collectively to begin to sort of think about those things. But since the rise of um, that economic tide was so so big and so long, all of those have been dismantled. Um, mm-hmm. The the um, um, have we seen uh, just recently the insurance? My insurance just went up a hundred dollars a month. Wow! And um, you know, that's that's a lot. And I don't know if there's anything you can do about it, really. In, uh, in no, there situations. isn't. And also, copays have doubled. So not only it's it's really not just a hundred a month, but it's probably closer to two hundred. Mm-hmm. And there are, um, um, and I have really good insurance. Yeah, can you imagine what, what other folks? Are, I mean, I'm not, you know, yeah, this is right. not. Uh, so, all of these safety nets, the the the, uh, the the old welfare state is being dismantled, and so the millennials and Generation Z, especially, they're now being cast as you're supposed to be an entrepreneur of the self, which is a fancy way of saying you may have 18 jobs over the course of your life, and you right. may have four at the same time, right. trying to cobble together the life that at one point you could have by having one job. My father probably right. made one-fourth of what my income is, Right. yet he had a pension, and he had was able to buy a house and put kids to college and all these sorts of things right with right. and if 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 he if we went back in time and gave him my income he would have you know oh my he, goodness, he, yeah. he would he would have well he could have when, who am I kidding? If he had my income, he, I don't know, he could have poor, he could afford afforded one of those plastic pools you buy yeah, in above ground pool. All <laughs> no, right. no, 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 that's the, the kitty pools. So oh, the kitty one, not even that. Okay, not even I got it. Yeah, like, I got but it. it's real interesting too because I, I mean, we see these economic changes, and that, and now in our political arena, we, we're talking about uh, student debt. And whether they're going to relieve yeah, the average, debt, and whether yeah. they're going to make college free, and all of those kinds of things are on the table and to talk about. As it, um, you know, uh, we've watched as um, the uh, at state colleges, which typically were uh, very cheap per credit, 
And right. there were things like the Pale Grant and whatnot. Like, uh, I, I was lucky in that, um, as an undergraduate especially, I the Pell Grant basically paid for everything. I was able to, cool. you know, so yeah. I, I didn't have any any undergraduate wow. debt. Wow. And, um, and, uh, and, and by the way, I, I, I didn't either coming out, but that was mainly, I believe, because, one, my parents helped, mm -hmm. but the cost of college was so low. It was you something went to a state school. Yeah. It was meant to yeah. be. It's but, amazing. But that's doubled, tripled. Um, the uh, the number of degrees one has to have. Um, uh, graduate school, to some degree, is becoming necessitated in, in certain ways. So we see all these economic pressures, social changes, and then you add the icing on the cake that it, it, it does look as if we're heading toward a looming environmental disaster, which no one seems to be able to do a thing about. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think all of that yeah. is pent up right in that in that charge of okay boomer, meaning that mm -hmm. folks mm -hmm. of one generation have had a chance to do something and they've not, and now that something new has to be done. And I mean Well, it, and the people look for someone to blame when things go wrong, even though it might be themselves. <laughs> They'd rather find someone okay, else, right? Good, 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 you, you, that's an important point. <laughs> Boomer. I'm sorry, hey, I'm sorry. hold it. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but even if you think about, like, uh, even our current president, in a way, um, the president before him, Obama, he, he may have fallen into the Boomer, but he was young enough also to be, you know, with at least one foot in Generation X. Trump represents, in some ways, sort of the the uber example of, of someone squarely bar, uh, placed right. in the um, you know in that um, and uh, uh, of the current batch of folks who are running against him I don't know where they uh, they probably still fall within Biden certainly would be a within the similar generation I don't right. know about Warren and, then, and, and uh, Sanders also would be a, right now Bloomberg is about to come in I think there's a bunch of uh, uh, talk about those kinds of things, but yeah, it seems like you just uh, don't worry about it. Uh, mm. You know, take down the uh, uh, the rainforest. Uh, we're not going to worry about the climate. We're just going to mm. burn money, and mm. uh, and it's all for now and that kind of thing. Which and I think part of what makes this, this interesting is is that you know, in some of the circles that I travel, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with them, but but they would say that the problem isn't generational. Yeah. Uh, the problem isn't um, – it, it has to do with our, our very economic system, that unfettered capitalism, the idea that right. um, we have to have constant growth. There has to be the constant growth and movement of capital. Right. And that is – and by unfettered means that and it is – And we're really working in that environment. I mean, that's, that is mm -hmm. true in mm -hmm. so many ways. And so – and uh, there's a famous quote. I think I may have mentioned it before that um, – uh, by Zizak. I, 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 something, some, something <laughs> just clicked a moment ago when you said capitalism, and I just went, okay, Zizak is about to come it's into the conversation. Here. I love it. And the idea that it, it would be easier to think of the end of the world than to think the end of capitalism. And Zizak has a spin on this, and he says, we even can't really do that because zombie films represent capitalism in its purest form. The zombies are the ultimate consumer. Even right. dead, right. you are continuing just to consume right. without <laughs> on stop. <laughs> so even our post-apocalyptic fantasies are plagued by a horizon that we cannot get outside of. That is uh, mind-boggling in a way. I, I also think that the uh, the human survivors are really looking in the same way. They're looking for food and shelter and, right. and uh, more Every, ammunition and things like that to kill the zombies. So uh, it, it, consuming everything on both sides. It takes you off the hedonic treadmill because, you know, that's what non-apocalyptic capitalism look like. You're right. supposed to, you know, we had more and more, and it puts you on a survival treadmill, but it's still consumption. Yes. And that hedonic treadmill is sort of part of what... Um, with with within the e economic tide, capitalism hit full stride, and we begin to consume and consume. We begin to uh, disposable consumption. Um, the idea that happiness is a goal. The idea that um, look at all the products that are sold on this notion. You know, have a coke and a smile. Right, um, and right, right. and uh, uh, Zizek again talks about how coke, in some ways, reflects the ultimate capitalist product hmm. because okay. it is um, uh, nutritionally empty. 
True. Bunch of sugar and... But it also chemicals. has sodium built into it. That's the secret of Coke. Yes. So it literally makes you thirsty as you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> so it is... It is... <laughs> It literally is created to be needed and yes. nothing more. Exactly. Huh? And so... It's not uh, refreshing and it doesn't since, revitalize everything. It doesn't do nothing, anything. It doesn't. So, nothing. So it, you know, it... it, it um, and, and so we, 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 we're on a treadmill. And if you think about the metaphor of a treadmill, you're sort of sitting in my, in my gym. You sit on a treadmill and there's a TV in front of you and you just kind of run and you can run for as long as you want with the TV there with no notion of what's going on around inside you or, 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 or no impact in the world around you. It's a little like the movie The Matrix. You're sort of plugged in right. in that moment. You're, and in some ways, that capitalism insists on, that we be matrixy enough that we consume. And our, uh, what we bring to the table is money so that we can consume more. Uh, and in our field, think, think about it in, in from a okay. position of psychology. Um, the whole notion, that, um, Elaine Badu calls it the happiness industrial complex. And part of uh, some of the goal of, of, uh, of meditation practices, if, as if they've come into third wave CBT and uh, been incorporated, uh, even CBT in general, if used the wrong way, these are all ways to get you to have better thoughts yes so you can keep working and consume and be more productive <laughs> be and more get productive. out there and make money and so, uh yeah consume. so that yeah the point of of the, the the buddhist or the meditative turn is you know you're really upset and you're really depressed and so why don't we get you to meditate more not well maybe i'm depressed because i'm working 80 hours a week at a job that's soulless oh man you know <laughs> And so, uh, you yeah. Are. Let's find another band aid uh, to put on it. And you're saying all of this meditation and mindfulness. I think it can be used right. as another way just to, to to be the to that that treadmill, just so you can keep running. Uh, I'm not saying it, it doesn't have its use, and um, I, I certainly meditate. It's been very helpful to me with and my anxiety. Yeah, cool. And my uh, uh, my psychopathic. Uh, Killing sprees have stopped. Well, <laughs> slowed down. They really, slowed down. They slowed down. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. You know. yes. but that could be age. I don't know. God, it's a little harder on the shoulders to dig. Yeah, it's yeah. You millennials it. didn't work enough uh, back there. See, I can throw one in there, too. <laughs> there we go. Well, see, see, but no, notice how in some ways we've, we've taken the topic from OK Boomer to thinking in terms of these, these um, categories that right. in some ways generate a conflict that is not the real conflict. Right. So right. In, in, in some ways, in fact, I would wonder, and this would be my, my thought, even this notion of generational categories, that can be driven by the capitalist impetus because you think of how to sell products to certain generations and you tell them they exist within this box so they'll step into the box and then you can sell them the things they want. So even, even this, these demarcations you're talking about in some ways are part of the problem. They don't allow right. us to think about the fact that it doesn't matter what generation you are, you are on a planet that may be in trouble. Now, it's true if you're a certain age, you may die before it goes off the, the cliff, but I don't think that's necessarily something that can help you sleep any better at night. Maybe right. I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it should. It's probably, yeah, it's probably it should not. should be a concern. Well, I, I don't... Um... I don't know what we can do uh, to sort of uh, stop that. It sounds like there's not many voices out there talking about this uh, capitalism uh, need to have some uh, restraining uh, restraints well, on it. That but, anything like that, it's more and more and more, and there's a new invention. You need this. Well, it's can, a they constant call, thing. They, they, there was, uh, they call it, uh, this may be Zizek too, but capitalism with a human face. What we often right. get is, as opposed to changing of the system, and again, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm sorry, That's but he, right. he uses a wonderful example of how, like, um, you know, you can go to Starbucks. I don't think they have this promotion anymore. But if you bought a cup of coffee, they would say, "Well, a dollar of this is going to go to a third world country to help folks." Right. And on one level, that's wonderful. It's going away. Nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> but it reflects. You don't stop to think. Wait a minute. Why are there people starving someplace when I think we have enough around here to go around? Yeah. 
<laughs> you don't really think like... No, you don't, do you? And instead, you just buy the coffee and you keep moving. So the problem is, how do you think yourself out of something that is so pervasive? Your very horizon right. is this capitalist horizon. That wasn't me. I, I think that was you, as a matter of fact. No, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's, there you go. That's quite all right. You know what? Well, is that telling you to buy something? <laughs> I mean, was, is that what is it reminded see, you to consume or what, what did I just get do? your subscription? I for just something? grabbed my phone. Yes. Which is the latest Pixel. And why did I need the latest Pixel? Oh, you had to have it. This all because <laughs> someone told somebody me. Somebody told you you had to have it. The ring we just heard was that someone was at my front door because we just purchased this fancy doorbell that will take a picture and tell you if someone's at your front door. <laughs> and you can literally see. And it's probably the UPS <laughs> man, too. He's pulling it's, up to give, give you yeah. the latest gadget that you just bought. Yeah. And, uh, it could be the UPS guy. My, my wife and I in here are friends. They hang out a lot, especially when I'm not there. So <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we heard about that last time. Yes, we <laughs> yes. got to do something about that. But, but this is a wonderful example of just the, the you know, the, of, um, of layer upon layer of consumption. But what also makes this even more interesting is, is that to produce this, chunks of it at least, the, 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 the elements in the battery, all these sorts of things, right. they often come from the third world. Right, they do. And they often require the grinding up of children and people to be able to produce it. Yes. And th there, there is, you know, there, there's some, well, you know, they now have a wage and they wouldn't have one if we didn't make these yeah, there's things. There's some sort of positives that come out of it, but <clears throat> minor by comparison, I think. Right. We just assume, well, you know, the system is kind of bad, but it's still helping them some. So there's right. no thought of how do, we, how do we think of a way in which, you know, and it may involve us not having the latest phone. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But to say that would be being, being accused of socialism or communism, you would right. automatically be put in a box that would, that would label you as somehow a threat. And I guess you would be a threat to the system if you begin to try to think a way out of this. Yeah, I, I really kind of <clears throat> think that, that uh, you know, the big corporations and they're uh, trying to get their uh, shareholders more dividends <clears throat> and more money and those kind of things. And the bottom line is money, so they're constantly moving. You said earlier the notion that we always have to have the next new thing. It, it, it seems like it's such a complex um, thing to, to manage because there are benefits of the latest technology. We want to have that. It's fun. It's mm -hmm. interesting. There's some science, a lot of things happening there. But at the same time, this consumerism is a, is a real problem. And when is enough enough? I guess mm -hmm. that's kind of the question I wonder about. You get so much. Some like there were some studies back about happiness. You talked about the industrial complex there, but the the notion that uh, what is uh, the salary where you get to where things are okay in your life. Yeah. And then what we see in the news is, hey, wait a minute, these, these rich people, these big corporations have so much money and they're still wanting more and more, and it kind of looks like greed to me in a way. And well, when is enough enough, I guess, is my question. And, you know, and even though I do have the urge to set fire to rich people, I uh, – <laughs> again, I, that, that's a theme, I guess. Yeah, I guess it, it, it came back up. But, um, <laughs> that's okay, uh, that's though. That's a we, As long as it's not being, uh, it, you know, Chimpier. brought to tuition, to fruition <laughs> to there, fruition, we okay. we're okay. But, uh, but I think it would also be – um, just an, another trap to suddenly talk about rich people as if they were this, this uh, we could put them in a box. Right. Because they are part of the same system we all are. You know? Sure. We're here. And uh, what, what, what's the famous quote by, um, oh, it's not Woody Guthrie, uh, that, um, that uh, what is it, the American voter will, uh, will uh, vote for somebody who is rich and exploit them because they have in their head the dream that someday they could get lucky and be rich too, right? And that, so that sounds right. Th th yeah. There, there, yeah. there literally is it, it. It is embedded in our dreams, in our fantasy space, all this sort of stuff, to to either consume in the hopes of getting wealthy. And once someone who 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 gets wealthy, I, I, what else could sh could they do but keep keep growing their wealth? I don't know. What, yeah, to, I, I, well, what are they I, supposed to do in a system that you know? I mean, if it were me and I had a billion bucks, I think I'd—I right. uh, well, don't know—I think I'd be. Um, this is going to be an interesting answer to that question. I go would ahead. go to sleep every yes. night 
in a bed of fresh Krispy Kreme donuts. I just lay in them. <laughs> they had to be fresh too. They'd bring them in. They'd be warm. I just lay in there and I'd go to sleep. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it, it may not take a mil a billion dollars, as you said, to be able to do that. So um, I could probably do that you, on my you current can, you salary. I'd be able to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> not sure why it's going to be a mess to clean up, but uh, so, so you've, yeah. heard of, you've heard of bed head. I'd come up with donut head. I'd be like these donuts <laughs> stuck to my face. Krispy Kreme, after all, <laughs> when the sign is on, it says hot donuts. Okay, I got it. But but yeah, when is enough enough? And and uh, so, uh, but that's not the goal. The goal is always more. That's what you're saying. Well, yeah, the the, the system is is the, it, consumption drives the system. Um, you know, a, a, a corporation is its profit margins have to show continual growth, or the folks who buy the stock are not happy. There is, um, there is, um, there is. If we stopped consuming, it would stop. Right. I mean that that is part of you know if you go again use the the metaphor of the movie the Matrix if if no one's plugged into the Matrix the Matrix stops it it no longer gets the energy it needs right um, right so it's it's this idea of this continual consumption making more and more money and to what goal I, it almost sounds like the uh, industrial complex this happiness thing you mentioned a moment ago but do. Right, so, so uh, uh, that's not the goal. The goal is just consumption itself. I think that. But the, can't you just look for this? this I think the happiest, point where you're happy. Okay, I've got enough to sustain. The happiest this is good life. In happiness, industrial com, uh, complex is is a way to um, to grease the wheels of the capitalist machine, so you can be a shiny cog and you will move as quickly as you need to to make the machine move. It's right. the goal would not be you know. Um, um, and that if, for instance, right now we, we're seeing a rise in depression, particularly among um, young adults, it's 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 really growing. We're seeing all these sorts of things. Yeah, and it's almost a natural extension of right. some of the things we talked about. And, and maybe it reflects to some degree what happens when we become untethered, when there isn't, um, you know, it's a term that people throw around all the time, the notion of neoliberalism. Right. And one way to find neoliberalism is is that it is liberal in the sense that we want to give as much freedom as we possibly can so people can consume. <laughs> right. The goal is, you know, that we want to uh, um, unburden um, the uh, the obstacles, moral or ethical or otherwise, so that individuals can be free, but it is still a freedom that is contingent on your capacity to make the system move. So. Well, I want to defend the boomer generation just a little <clears throat> bit because um, we uh, we had a, a good portion of uh, our generation wanting to just drop out and get off the grid. And, they didn't. Uh, they, they didn't. <laughs> they, there was an attempt, though. I just want to say that there was some some level of some folks in that generation saying, okay, w what is the good life? Let's define that, and we don't need money to do that. And uh, – so dropping out, uh, kind of a notion that happened there. So there, there's there, there's something in a kernel of that maybe still alive a little bit. Of like, let's take a look at our consumption. What does the individual and the individual family need, and how much, and what's a good life? You know, we well, gotta define thinking, it. I, I think if I was looking for someone who might be sort of an icon of the Boomer generation, how about Grace Slick? Okay. Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson yeah, Starship, yeah, yeah. and then Starship. I guess if they'd kept going, they would have been Star and then st by the st end of it. And the S and the, yeah, the S. <laughs> they the, didn't. Uh, <laughs> they kept the the, so um, um, she was in the news because reportedly she la allowed Chick-fil-A to um, use one of her songs, and then she took all the money they gave her and put it to a, um, um, uh, uh, a pro-gay rights group. Right. And so everybody was applauding her for it and like, you know, right. it's, it's great you're doing this thing. But if we're sort of thinking about in the way we've been thinking, wait a minute, she yeah. she she just really just kept the system rolling. Right. Chick-fil-A still gets their profits. <laughs> They're not, yeah, um, not, not hurting. 
the nuts, you know. Except, so. except now the Popeye chicken sandwich battle with the Chick Fil A right, chicken right. sandwich is that a, a f- huge battle. We're gonna have to do a show about that. Is that affecting Chick Fil A's bottom line? Uh, probably not that much. <laughs> it's okay. You make know. the point. But because uh, <laughs> I think people in, pulling out guns about that uh, in this town alone, there. <laughs> there are like sixty Chick Fil A's. Like I, I like, <laughs> like I went in my house the other day just to get like you know. There was a I, room in your house. Chick Fil A. Suddenly they they put a Chick Fil A in my living. Room. Room. I'm like, what the? What? <laughs> I blink. You know. You're a vegan. There's no room for <laughs> yeah. a chicken sandwich. Somebody shoved some waffle fries in my face, <laughs> and I'm like, what? Else? Hey, you might make a profit though. <laughs> could, hey, let's look at the uh, consumer side of it. Yeah. it. Might be something. I think they had to open a Chick Fil A restaurant. Overall, was 1.2 mil to be able to build, put one up, and then the profit margin is like five, five hundred grand a, a year, something like that. Oh. Huh? So uh, okay. you you know you you could quickly. Uh, um, well, like Ross Perot said back in the day when he was running for president, uh, here's how you get it. Here's how you become a millionaire. First, you get a million dollars, and then you. <laughs> yeah. Is that, that what he said? The, uh, yeah, that was kind of the, <laughs> one of his charts that he pulled up back in the. Only boomers would refer and know anything about that joke. Is that guy still uh, alive? I uh, know. He's not. He's no, not. I, he, I thought he was like like a brain in a vat. <laughs> you know. There's some that maybe need to be, but uh, yeah. So here's here's this idea of us um, consuming capitalism uh, nonstop. Nothing can stop it. What about? And I've said this more than once. Um, what about capitalism with a little socialism mixed in? Can we get well, a blend? You know, the critics of capitalism say you got to be careful because that's just another flavor of neoliberalism, and that it, you know, that it. Um, um, I might it, be down for that. Yeah. I don't know. And you know, one of the most successful countries right now, um, who are um, uh, and have made great use of of capitalism, is China. Yes. And they are a socialist country. They've learned from us. And they, <laughs> and they have. They are literally. But look at the uh, the effects. If you've ever seen pictures of folks who can't breathe because of smog, uh, the decimation of their own uh, uh, forests, um, um, there is there there could be something deadly about the very idea of capitalism. It's a little like saying telling a um, a heroin addict, you know. Why don't you just do a little less heroin, and you know here, uh, you know here, here here are some nice shoes. I don't know whatever you whatever you want okay, to get. Okay, my my point is uh, being butchered here. Well, wait, it may, it may be a good I, point. It I may be a say, good point. But yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I don't. Yeah, it's almost like uh, weaning someone off of this uh, this kind of nonstop scenario. You know what? I don't see a stop to it. I think. Uh, but you, you know an Probably example Zizek of right, uh, of, uh, of a of uh, a you could often look to science fiction to sort of give us some idea of what that horizon, a post capitalist horizon would look like. You know what, <laughs> science fiction franchise, that um, really sort of gives us an idea of what a, a post capitalist system would look like. I uh, d- don't know. I would guess Star Trek maybe. Fifty Shades of Grey. Fit- no. No, no. <laughs> Come on. No, no, no. You hit it. That's not Star Trek. Okay, I got one. All right, good for because me. Because in Star Trek. They developed this way to be able to matter generators, and that's what. And yes. So suddenly they're, you know, a cup it, of Earl Grey tea, please, and, it, and there, it, there is. it is. Okay, got it. And so suddenly it it stops the system, and so what happens? Now again, this is science fiction, but uh, uh, apparently I, also may have been a, true. a war a World War Three, I think, happened somewhere in that in that in that uh, in their timeline. But right. um, it becomes a place where. If if there's no longer poverty, right? There's no longer necessary the kind of conflict. We, we still conflicts, sure. But always. we begin to move. We, we begin to do other things as a collective, as a group, and we begin to identify as um, um, the the federation. We begin to to make connections with other other species. It, that in some ways is sort of a a working utopia that envisions a post capitalist society. Okay, I'm I'm. Um I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> this off out of the out of the blue, but um, if you uh, it, it may relate, maybe you can help me make it relate. But if you could do away with any of the mental illness categories, the mental illness that you see in a, mm-hmm. on a day day practice that you think might um, affect some change with this 
capitalism problem, socialism problem that we're talking about, what would it be? I'm just curious. Pica. No, no, I'm kidding. Pica. <laughs> oh, the the eating of uh, clay, I think, yes. Not yeah. that many, not that big a category. It's not, it's Let's not go huge. for a bigger one. Well, what, 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 think the, so uh, let me see what you're getting at. So if, had, if we could, if it, that there could be some form of psychopathology that sort of, that sort of, uh, generates and, and fuels capitalism, you think? I think I'm kind of going think, there a little bit. What was bit. that yeah. book you had? You had that... Yeah, Without so, Conscience. Uh, uh, well, you're we, right. We just talked about that. Yeah. In, in some ways, psychopathy or sociopathy, the uh, the ability to see the folks and the things around you as simply instruments. Right. So some variant of narcissism or psychopathy probably, I mean, you know, uh, I, a, a healthy psychopath does well within a capitalist system. That is true, isn't it? It's Taking advantage a... of people, trying to get... Yeah, I was talking about the uh, sort of almost the, the white-collar crime uh, that has the sociopath built the, into Bernie the... Bernie Madoff uh, executive... was an example, right? There's right. Someone who, yeah. you know, a white-collar criminal, and it was, it was just lines on a page. You weren't thinking about the fact that this was, you know, elderly people's um, life savings. Right. <laughs> you just... You could just move in that direction and take and take and take. Yeah. And... At some point, people need to recognize that. I'm not so sure that that, that take-and-take attitude um, is going anywhere because we got the poor people looking up toward the rich uh, when it comes to politics and thinking, maybe one day I can be that, uh, well, and then it. let them do whatever they want to do because that's what mm-hmm. rich people do, and we bought into that. Come on. And that someday I could be just like them. Like even right. even going to the grave thinking, oh, if I win the lottery, if this happens, suddenly I can be them. And um, it was a Sam Harris quote. He said that uh, uh, Donald Trump is a what a poor person thinks a rich person is. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in some ways there is, you know. And Trump's also saying that the difference between me and the folks who vote for me um, is that I'm just like them, but I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> And that, not, uh, not a lot of thought going into that, I would imagine. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a that's that's probably true. Well, that's that was a good answer uh, to my question, and I and I appreciated well, that because so, I think I, I was just trying to tie in. Well, After maybe, all, this has got therapy, and right. so we're, we're moving the uh, mental illness categories into this capitalism push. So well, well, there are two ways two ways to sort of tie this together and sort of maybe tie it up with a bow is that. The mental, the, the mental health piece of it is is that a lot of, I think, some of the mental health categories that seem to be growing, depression and whatnot, may be a reflection of the system that we're in. And right. that when we begin to think about it simply as genetic or begin to th- simply as this or that, it could be uh, the wheel that's squeaking that we need to listen to right. that would suggest there's some change necessary. So I might throw that out. I also might throw that you're right, that it sort of it generates... A way of thinking about the world. Let's call it some form of, of group psychopathy. We don't think about the planet. We don't think about the an- other animals on it. Our consumption of meat. Our consumption. Period. And so maybe part of the way out of this to be able to move outside of this capitalist horizon would be to stop and to be a little more collective, a little more aware of who we are and the people around us. Maybe what the answer, I, I, the way out of or to attenuate capitalism would be empathy, which is the opposite of psychopathy, right? Right. So we may want to think about, and maybe that is in that when the woman in, um, I I don't know what what government, where she uttered the phrase, okay, boomer. Yeah. uh, Maybe maybe the the, the cry is not, uh, okay, boomer, in an attempt simply to silence someone who was attempting to silence her. Maybe it's a way to remove all these categories and to have some sort of empath, empathic connection with each other that in, then, in turn, may allow us to have some sort of connection with the world. Maybe. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, we need to figure out some ways to be more sensitive and caring and empathic um, in our daily day lives and uh, not fall into these uh, binary categories and where we put people into you know uh, the boxes and we know everything about them because of a small phrase or the party that they uh, pledge allegiance to but there's a lot of work to be done it's what it sounds like I'm, I know we, we've discussed it but I'm not sure that you you've left me with too much hope today well 
Uh, there, uh, most folks, if they if 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 they have hope, they think at some point science will save us. Somebody out there has got a solution, and when they come up with it, we're okay. Right. So that's the hail no, mary. No, most no of us work are living on under. your own part to do that, right? Let's assume uh, somebody out for there a is miracle to happen, kind of thing. Uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna open another Chick Fil A franchise in my living room. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna need a drive-through, so I just want to tip you off. You're gonna you're gonna actually need a drive-through to make that thing work. Um, well, this has been fun today. I don't I don't uh, we we've kind of touched on a lot of a lot of problems, and um, I've been shouted at, and called a boomer. Um, there so you go. I'm not sure how I feel about any of this. And it well, we we opened hand. this. I want to close with we talked about the the, the, the scourge. The, uh, the disease that uh, afflicts a number of Americans, and, and there's not enough to talk about it in the media, and there should be more research, yeah. Chimpier. And Chimpier. I want to say that one I of the ways... The, uh, I love the full circle thing that happens it, it here, is. despite uh, <laughs> my attempts to uh, to block it, uh, that we, well, we, just, we had to come back you, you to know, you, you know what? Um, but I'm glad we didn't get to talk about outer space. <laughs> uh, that would have been even worse. Yeah, People don't know what that because. is. So I think I'm going to wrap this show up before we even go to that and uh, the discussion about uh, uh, Dr. Sean Cruz. Cause that, that always and his favorite planet. I'm out of here. Thank you for listening today. Dan, I'll see you next time.